good? You give me the green light, director. And we are good. Three, two. What's up, stalemates? Welcome to another episode. You guys have been looking forward to this one for a while now. Actually, I first, I want to say that this has kind of been in the works for a little bit. And I didn't want to put it out there. I wanted to like, I want to do the same thing that we did with the Tom Brands thing where I don't talk about it. All of a sudden, Tom and I take a picture, I post it online, people go crazy. I, then- I ruined it. The, my phone blows up insanely. I'm leaving the barbershop and my phone's going crazy. I look, Willie puts it out there saying his first appearance in over a year is with the Stalemate show. So we got him here, Willie Saylor. What's going on, brother? Good to be good to be free. Good, I'm feeling good now. I guess yeah. maybe. Um, it's probably but weird. sorry. I sorry I ruined your surprise. But you know, uh, no. I mean, I, it's like the typical in my mind. Like we just met each other for the first time like 20 minutes ago. In my mind, that's like the most willy thing that could have happened. Is like, well, I have a big mouth, right? And um, classic, classic willy style. And blurt something out, but. No, I mean, it went crazy. It, Are you aware how many likes that tweet got, by the way? No, how many? I mean, it was like almost 700. That's amazing. I mean, that's pretty I'll good. I'll tell you what, speaking of that, that throws it back to uh, one of the first things in the trial. Yeah. Where it was like, and how many, <laughs> yeah, yeah. how many followers do you have now, Mr. Sailor? Yeah. 24,360. Yeah, <laughs> you knew exactly. And you did that mean thing. Yeah. And you made my mama laugh. I'll tell you what, you yeah. make my mama laugh. Yeah. I'm coming on your show. Okay. Well, I appreciate you coming on. We're going to get into the trial stuff. First of all, respect the Thames, by the way. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I yeah. mean, respect that East Coast. I'm where I East mostly Coast. look like I'm going to hang some drywall. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, before we get into the trial stuff, obviously, that's how we got to know each other is because you just got done with, kind of done with uh, this big trial that everybody was into online hashtag willy trials um it's kind of did like, you start that did you invent that i think i think i did but um i like i also i also don't know if it's one of those things where like somebody else said it and i like subconsciously right took it but i think that i did you made it you made it though i think i made it what it was but it's like flow like somebody started it first but then like i made it <laughs> there, there you go um but let's get let's get into Willie Saylor a little bit. This whole interview is not going to be about like your backstory and stuff, but I do want to get into it because I feel like a lot of the people at Flow and the guys at Flow, we don't really know much about them because they there's a lot of like we the, the trial is the first time we got to see behind the curtains for a lot of stuff. Yeah, and um, there are people who know your backstory, but there's some people that don't. How mm -hmm. did you get into wrestling media? Um, I I grew up in a really wrestling passionate town, District Eleven. Produced a lot of uh, produced a lot of great college wrestlers, Olympians, um, Pennsylvania, right? National champions, yeah. Pennsylvania, it's right on the border, Easton. It's right on the border, literally the Delaware River. Jersey's on the other side, and um, just a really, really passionate area for wrestling. Mm -hmm. um, and I grew up my whole my whole life wrestling. Um, <clears throat> Were you a forum guy though, or like how did you? How did yeah, you say so, I want to cover the sport? Did you go to? You didn't go to journalism school, right? No. So because we we heard that in the um, trial, I can't remember what it was. I was on a yeah. So I was I was I was on a nationally ranked team. Um, we had a number of nationally ranked individuals from from me to um, up to like forty five. We were all nationally ranked, every one of us. Not to brag or anything, but go well, ahead. I mean, my <laughs> junior year, we were number one in the country. Yeah, no big deal. Um, and and that's not just, I mean, you don't have to be on a nationally ranked high school team to be a wrestling journalist. But here's what I'm like, sort of setting the stage. I was at Brian Snyder's house. Brian Snyder's an assistant coach in Nebraska, the head assistant coach. And um, shout out. We were in high school. We were actually leaving to go to Ocean City, Maryland for the summer, not for the summer, for a couple of weeks in the summer. And, uh, I don't know. I couldn't fall asleep. So <laughs> Gee, I'm dating myself here, but yeah. internet at that time was like relatively new. <laughs> what, year, what year? Like 2000? This is like 95. Oh, wow. Okay. 96. Okay. And so I went over to the computer 
and I turned it on and Brian's father was our assistant coach. He was actually, he was actually the head, he was captain of Penn State's wrestling team. He was also the head coach of Lafayette College wrestling team when they were division one okay. and they cut the program. Keep Stanford wrestling. Um, so I turn the computer on and up pops the mat.com message boards. And that got me hooked. I was reading all this stuff about wrestling, you know? And uh, never thought about a career in it whatsoever. Um, but I went to school for, uh, well, I went, I went, when I graduated high school, I went to my grandparents' dairy farm and ran that for a little bit. And then I tinkered around with wrestling in college. Um, nothing to write home about. I went to school for, I went to grad school for creative writing and uh, a master's of fine arts in, in fiction writing. But then I came back from, from, from grad school and, uh, and I just wanted to mellow out. I didn't, I didn't want to do anything with academia. I didn't want to do anything with really thinking about school anymore. I mean, I had been in school for eight years or whatever. And I got a stupid job, mindless job. It was like billing at a medical thing. And uh, it was sort of just what I needed because, um, I don't know, I was tired of thinking. Yeah. But I started, I started getting back into wrestling. I started following the mat.com message board. So you started off as like started, kind of a forum guy then? Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I mean. I'm making a long story of it, but I, that's, that's the gist of it. I was a forum guy. So what was your first like wrestling paycheck then? So what happened was um, there was a bunch of us on the mat.com forums. The mat.com forums, if you go there today, there's college, international, high school. Well, back in the day, and when I'm saying back in the day, I'm saying 2011. No, nah, 2007, something like that. Um, there used to be a non-wrestling topics board. And... It was a bunch of us message board junkies who also would talk about politics and religion and post pictures of hot chicks, yeah. right? And, yeah, and we talked about everything, right? Yeah. So one day we all woke up and um, they deleted <laughs> USA Wrestling. Hey, USA Wrestling, you created a monster. Yeah. This is why I'm in wrestling journalism. The reason I'm in wrestling journalism is because you deleted the non-wrestling topics forum. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Because you deleted yeah. the non-wrestling topics forum, and so this guy that was a frequent poster, he started the open mat. And the reason it's called the open mat is because the mat oh. censored. The mat censored. So they started the open mat, which was nothing but a f bunch of wrestling forums. So yeah. we went there and we talked to politics, yada, yada, yada. So after a couple of weeks of that happening and me working a mindless job, I said to the guy that started the, um, started the open mat, I said, hey, how'd you feel if I wrote an article about this guy? Would you post it? He was like, well, why not? Because right? mm -hmm. at that time it was only, it was only for What's him. there to lose? Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah, we're gonna post an article, great. Wrote another article, wrote another article. Was it like uh, recruit, like right now, like you're, you do recruiting stuff now, is it, was it a recruiting article? Do you remember, or was it like an opinion piece? I don't, I don't recall. I think it was a profile piece. I think it was like a piece on a certain wrestler. Okay. And uh, so he said, yeah, right. And then, and then I started looking at other rankings. Mm -hmm. And because now at this point, I wasn't in school anymore. I have time to deep dive into the scene. I'm looking at other rankings. I'm like, God, they're god off. I'm like, I mean, at no, that time, that, has, that shouldn't be this way. Who who would have been the other ones at the time? Was it Intermat only the one, or like? It was Intermat, and 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 that's no shade at Josh Lowe. Yeah. I mean, and there was other ones. There was Win Magazine. No shot at those guys. Rob yeah. Cheryl. No shot at him. He's a legend. I just didn't know uh, at the time who was all around at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was there was AWN, Win, Intermat. Um, you just thought you could do. And and so I mean, 
I just got frustrated, right? I'm like, right. no, that's not that. That's not how it should be. Like all, just, like all wrestling fans. Yeah, yeah, right? I mean, truth be told, some of y'all out there listening to this right now are probably like, yeah, Willie, like yours, it just came out Tuesday, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I just wanted, I thought I could do a better job. Yeah. And so um, I said to that guy, his name's Eric Betterman, haven't seen you in years. Um, I said, how about I post rankings? I said, how about if I do rankings, high school rankings, and would you post them on a site? And he said, yeah, hell yeah. So I did, and it really started, that's when it happened. It really started to gain traction. Were you doing high school, college? I was just doing high school stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was doing high school and high school recruiting. That's where my passion was. I mean, that's where my passion is to this day, but um, it really started gaining some traction. Were you at this time full time for Open Mat, or or is this no just kind of like a no, residual? No, I thing? lost money. Yeah, I lost money doing that. Every trip I went to was on my own. Every piece of equipment I bought was on my own. Mm. Um, but you were seeing the page views and stuff was going pretty good. Well, yeah, I started getting a lot of feedback. You know, I had a. I had a um, Willie at the open mat dot com um, email account, and I get a lot of feedback from parents. I get a lot of feedback from coaches, high school coaches, fans. I get a lot of feedback from college coaches, like, yeah. "Wow, thank you for what you do. This yeah. is great stuff." Because I mean, the only people there was no big boards. Correct. There were no big boards, right? I mean, there were some top 50 lists with no commentary and no context when you say commentary that's like that paragraph at the top of the thing right yeah yeah, yeah. and there was and there was really no regularity i think i think what i brought was i think what i brought back then in those early days was regularity yeah it was updated often and people could follow the trajectory who's up who's down who's hot who's not you know and um I didn't have a Twitter. I didn't have a Facebook. And so most of the feedback I got was from email and it was encouraging, you know? Yeah. And then, and then um, the one year, totally, I had no idea. I walked into a social at NCAAs and they said, you won National Wrestling Writer of the Year. Let's go. And I was like, I'm doing something right, <laughs> you know? So, you, was that the first moment that you, like, had, uh, like, okay. Like, like for us, like, there's a couple of moments where I was like, okay, somebody is paying attention a little bit here. Um, was that the first time that you were like, oh, wow. Or was there, like, a coach that reached out before that was like, hey, my kid should have did this, or wow, you're the only one to recognize that? When, when the college coaches started calling and emailing, when the college coaches started, and that was before I won the award. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it's janky to say, I'm yeah. not saying I won National Wrestling Writer of the Year and like pounded my chest about it. How many times have you won it, by the way? Twice. Twice. Should, I, I should be every year, but they have yeah. a five year limit. Well, I don't know. I think, I think we deserve, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you nah. deserve, hey, you deserve no, heck some, no. Sort of, some sort of award. You, you absolutely do. That's nah. why I'm here. No, I mean, we're, we're not journalists here, that's for sure. We're just fans. Um, so then at, at what point were you like, okay, I won this award, things are going well, I'm getting page views, uh, coaches care, I wanna start doing this for a living. Like, is this when Flo kind of stepped in the picture or was like open mat like, hey, we gotta keep this guy? Well, at the open mat, I love those dudes and I love, I love what we had sort of built. But at the same time, I mean, at the same time, it was all, it was all me. I, I didn't get much help, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I was sort of flying solo and, um, you know, I was with them two or three years and never got paid once. And I'm not, I'm not throwing shit because the money wasn't there. Right, I yeah. mean, this is wrestling journalism, right? right? Yeah. I did, this, is, this is nothing to do with like, I love those guys, Eric Betterman, you know, and yeah. Jason Bryant was there after me and Earl, Earl's the man. 
Um, nothing but love for those guys, but this was early days. This was early days, yeah. and I got not one dime until um, Eric had gotten a deal with Clinch Gear at the time. Eric is the guy who started Open Mat. Eric Betterman was the owner, founder of the Open Mat. And he got a deal for clinch gear for our rankings and i think it was a thousand bucks a month yeah and to call them clinch gear rankings clinch gear big boards right you know iron man preview presented by clinch gear <clears throat> and so it was a thousand bucks a month he gave me 400 bucks a month and you know i got paid 400 bucks a month for six months and like until i went to flow mm. and you know the flow the flow uh so you did that for six months and then you went to flow no i did it well i did it i mean i was with open mat for two or three years right but when the paycheck started coming out you're only there for six months and then you left yeah the clinch gear yeah. thing kicked in and then i don't know eight months six months and then so at the time we were all broke, right? Right. Uh, including Flo and including a lot of other media outlets. And so, like I said, I was getting 400 bucks a month, but I'd go to Fargo and spend two grand, right? right? I'd go to Beast of the East or Iron Man, pay hotels out of my pocket. I mean, I'm not, I'm not playing a violin for you my didn't, own, You didn't, you right? enjoyed it I mean, it, just, I loved it, yeah. right? So that's what I did. But the financials were what they were. What right, they were. they were what they were. Yeah. And so when, and Flo, Flo, Flo didn't have money either. So what, so this is what happened. I would be at tournaments or I would, I would like email a, a, a tournament director. Hey, I'd love to cover your tournament. Any chance? You just you hook it up with a hotel room, right? Mm -hmm. And they would say yes, or they would say no. I got to write this down. <laughs> right. Yes. Do it. Yeah. Do that. I'm going to get beat up on Meteor Row, though. So <laughs> I, should, I should be up in the top row with everybody else. Beat up by who? Uh, no comment. Nobody's beating you up. Nobody messing with you. Yeah. So anyway, the point is, a lot of the times, the tournament director would be like, Oh hell yeah, we want Willie there, and oh hell yeah, we want Flo there. Are those guys normally or girls? Are they normally wrestling people, or are they just like business people? The that... tournament directors? Yeah. A lot of times, more times than not, wrestling people. But that there is, there are. Um, like it's not just some random person at college or high school put in it, or is it normally like a wrestling like mind? Like the tournament directors? Yeah. More often than not, they're wrestling people. Okay. But there are a lot like. Um, so they are aware of who you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the current, the current um, director of Iron Man is sort of a CEO type. He's not really a wrestling person, mm -hmm. you know, but he does a really good job, um, and he's learning the scene. So you would email them saying, "Yeah." Can so I do what it? would happen was, I mean, just beyond beyond the hotel room things is, I would see Joe and Bader mm -hmm. twice a month. And they were with Flo. And they were with Flo. Yeah. And the tournament director would be like, and first of all, we were congenial, right? We were buddies, yeah. started being buddies. And second of all, the tournament director oftentimes would be like, yeah, I can hook you up with a hotel room. And they'd tell Joe Flo, yeah, I can hook you up with a hotel room. And we get there, we'd be sharing the room together. <laughs> <laughs> right? So that's how it was like that. Yeah. So, um, and they sniped you. Yeah, eventually. Um, I mean, how long did that go on before you were like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go work You know, a while. year, two years, a year or a year or two. And then I remember Joe Flo called me. Joe Flo. Joe Williamson, he's a man. Joe Flo. That dude, he's a forgotten gem. Yeah, for I'd real. say for, I mean. Honestly. I, I'm not forgotten, but. One of the That's kind of seems like I haven't known him that long. I've only know, I've only been doing this since like April, but uh, I've got to know him um, past few months and stuff. And he just seems like you can't find one bad thing about him. No, and he just seems to be like when I think of Flo, I've been following Flo since the early days when when the logo was way different. Uh, it was green. When I picture. 
floor wrestling, I think Joe Williamson. I think Bar I think Mark Bader. You think green. I think Willie Saylor. I think Green. Yep. Uh, the color green, and I think Zeb Flo Miller. fucking green. And, and Zeb Miller. Like those are the, those are the people that I think. I remember when when Joe had left and being like, Zeb, you know, Zeb, sh Zeb should be thought about before me. Yeah. Zeb Zeb Miller is a killer, man. Yeah. Those yeah. guys are. I mean, like guys like Zeb Miller and uh, Fretwell and Roper. Yeah. They're the they're the forerunners. But, I mean, people like Fretwell and Roper. Well, I mean, and Bader and Joe too. Yeah. But they brought they brought something that wrestling never seen before. They they brought wrestling real talk. Yeah. You know. Well, it just seemed like back then we get we did get to see a lot of like the behind the scenes stuff and like that's what drew me, drew me into flow at first was like these guys are living the, the dream. Like it doesn't look like they're millionaires or anything like that, but they're going around covering sports. They're having oh, fun in the hotel room. Yeah. You know, they're having. They a good weren't time. millionaires by any stretch. I mean, yeah. we were. We were sleeping on couches. Yeah. Right. We were. We were. But who cares though? You're having. We we're fine. You know, you're, you're going to cover like your, your favorite sport. Yeah. At every event that you can go to, and you're and you're putting out content like. Yeah. You know. It was. It was. But let, let's was not. Fun. Let's not. Joke. We were young let's enough. Not, to, we were young enough to endure that, right? Yeah. We were young enough to like. Well, I'm going to Iron Man. Right. Where are you staying? I don't know. I'll figure it out when I get there. Right. right. We were young enough to do that. Let's not jump ahead though. Like, so you you know, you're sleeping in hotel rooms with Bader and Williamson, and then finally you're like, all right, I'm working for Flo. And that's when the whole thing changed, right? For you? The whole the whole game. Yeah, period? Joe, Joe, Joe texted me one time or called me and said, um, Hey, we're looking for another content guy. And I was like, yo, let me be that guy. Yeah. You know? And he was like, Yeah, exactly. He's like, I lobbied for you. I said you'd be perfect. Um, and I was never good with the camera, you know. Joe and Bader, they're hustlers. They they did awesome stuff. And they knew I, what I would bring would be something different in, sort, in terms of print, right? In terms of articles, rankings, co contextual stuff. The brain. <laughs> the brain. <laughs> um, so he was like, Martin's going to call you. So... First conversation, I'll never forget it because I was at Times Square. It was my first or second, first or second, um, beat the streets. Mm -hmm. Coleman Scott was wrestling Sean Bunch. It was the dumbest thing. USA Wrestling, I love you. But that was the dumbest thing ever. They had two dudes wrestling off for the Olympic spot. <laughs> On a mat that wasn't level, I swear. If you, yeah. I swear, if you put a marble on there, it would have went. I feel like they've they've had quite a few. Uh, they can't get the mat situation right at Beat the Streets. No. Yeah. Also, also, you could have fried an egg on that thing. Yeah, yeah. Because was this it was, an outdoor? Was it? Outdoor? It was outdoors. Was it in Penn Station? No, it was in Times Time Square. Square. Was yeah. it? And the mat, if you touched it, melted. Harder than Hades. Yeah. And. uh they determined who the Olympian was on that mat, and Coleman won. He went on to win bronze, but yeah, yeah. Right before the event started, about an hour before the event started, Martin called me and said, "Hey, thinking about this. All right, cool. Yeah, I think I'd like to. I think you know I'd be interested. All right, we'll call you back later." So yeah, and so then you know. You, you ended up obviously you end up working there for years um mm -hmm. you did their rankings you put out content uh eventually podcasts came along you started doing podcasts video stuff everything that's like when your twitter exploded you got to how many followers what are you at today i'm sure you know i, I don't 22, know 22,000 23,000 i'm sure it's um, more by now i think i just hit 25 well i'm about to hit 25 some ballpark so eventually to many surprise, including myself. I mean, this all happened before I even. I didn't even have show. Twitter. I didn't even have Twitter until I went to Flow, Karen. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We got you know twenty five thousand. Who else got the twenty five? They said that you had a hundred followers before you got there. Maybe, maybe. I th maybe I had a Twitter that I tweeted t twice or something. I don't know. But that was a valid point though. In the trial was. You like, think that was a valid point? No, no, no. It was a valid point for you that like. Like, obviously, there's some give and take, right? But I think, yeah. I don't think it was as lopsided as they were trying to say. Flo took you to 20,000 right. followers. Right. Who else did they take that? Who else did they take that much? I will say, though. Maybe it was something I was doing on my own. I will say, though, Flo had put out this video, which I thought was copying something that I did. And so I quote retweeted it and like said, 
hey, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but change it up a little bit. Yeah. And if you went to f the actual tweet from Flo, there was like 30 people that had uh, responded like, you're ripping off stalemates, That's stalemates, right. stalemates. And that night I got like 150 new followers. So to Karen, you did, Flo did give me 150 new followers. So I'll give her, I'll give her props for that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, but anyways, that's this interview is not about me. It's about you. So something happened. I get on Twitter one day. I don't know if it, it could have been the Hawkeye report that I heard the news. It was either Hawkeye report or you, and you actually even jumped in that thread, I think, and said you're leaving Flow. So you were there for how many years, and then you when and then you decided to leave. Was it, I was there for almost eight. Eight years. It seems longer than that. It, does. it seems like lifetimes. If you think about it, eight years isn't that long, but that's I that had, is a long time. But it's I had hair when I started. Yeah, I had I had <laughs> hair. So you were there for eight years, and I feel like like that number is gonna be like fifteen. All right, you were there for eight years. What changed that you were like, you know what? Um, I mean, we saw a little bit in the trial, but obviously there's certain stuff you can't say. But um, what changed that you were like, um, I gotta go do something else? Well, the the precipitant. I mean, the the the, the cause was. The cause was venture capitalist dollars, yeah. right? In my opinion, I don't think I'm, you know, there's things. It became too corporate? Yeah, I mean, there's things that I don't want to say. Not that I'm not, I'm holding anything back right now, but the verdict's not in yet, right? So I don't want to, Right. there's certain things I'm not going to really divulge, but I think I, I'm safe in saying that um, they became corporate, right? They became not what's best for wrestling. I mean, Martin, Martin had five or six um, corporate mottos. Mm -hmm. Be bold and brave, bleed passion. Um, you know, things that really were, were little quips that, that meant something, you know? And at the end, and I don't think I'm breaking any news here. No, we, um, all, we all saw the trial, so. Yeah, I mean, in the end, and still to this day, they're after, they're after the sub. They're yeah. after the subscription, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it takes to get that. That's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and it hurts the editorial voice. Silencing you. And it hurts the content. Um, well, it hurts the truth. Yeah. For sure. Were you the only one there that got like uh, reprimanded in terms of, not, not in terms of like overall performance plans or whatever that was called, but were you the only one that they were like, hey, maybe not go so hard at this school or maybe not talk about this guy so much? Were you the only one there that was getting that or? No, you know what? And, and this never came up in the trial. Is what's weird about the trial is, or being in a trial, and it was a learning experience for me. You know, Same. I mean, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes during the course, <laughs> sometimes during the course of the trial, I think I handled myself well. Other times, I, um, other times, I wish that I could expand upon my answer. Right. So you can only. That you just got to answer that one question. You can only, you know. Did you have Burger King for lunch? Yeah, but no, that's it. Nope. Yes, yeah, yeah. Nope. Yeah. They don't yeah. want the but, right? They don't want the reason why. Right. Um. Well, one thing that never came up is what really happened was I ran everything right at one point and for a long time. I called the shots. I said, "We're doing this. We're doing that. Let's invent this." Let's start doing this. Let's stop doing this. Um, picture and title approved every one of them. Everything that went up on flow. Managerial duties. And, and editorial voice, yeah. and, and, right? Editorial voice and brand, mm -hmm. right? And so then they asked me if I wanted to, I mean, they basically said, Willie, wrestling's uber successful. 
sprinkle some of the uh, we want you to sprinkle some of that juju on mm -hmm. flow track mm. and flow this and flow that and i said nah dog i'm i'm wrestling <laughs> you know let's go i'm only wrestling yeah. i'm only wrestling that's all i want to do and they imagine said, imagine willie though had a, like a flow marching band thing yo i went to flow <laughs> rodeo stuff yeah they said that in the trial I said, no, no, I'm wrestling. Yeah. They said, we'll pay you this. And I said, when do I start? <laughs> and yeah. so I they did wanted, it. Did they want you to do commentary on rodeo or is it just like no, this experience? They, no, what they wanted me to do was say, what they wanted me to do was have these meetings. Oh, geez, I was in meetings nonstop when I took that position. Bless you. Thank you. I was in meetings nonstop. And but what they wanted me to do was say, hey, Here's a storyline that's going into this event. Yeah. Hit this point before, hit this point before, hit this point before. Then when you go, we want you on, a, on the ground for these major, the major ones. Mm -hmm. And make sure they are pushing into that big development. This happened. Make sure you're writing about it this way. And... Get your feet wet in the sport. You know, get, I didn't know that I'm at track. Yeah, yeah. Get your feet wet in the sport and see what they could be doing different to improve it, right? Okay. So I did that, and that was probably my worst mistake. My, my, my worst mistake was probably chasing the money, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so I should have just stayed with wrestling. But I took this position... And I put piles in the position of my old role. Did you recruit him to flow or how did he end up the there? Whole, I guess? The whole time I recruited him. Yeah. The whole time I recruited him. I mean, me and piles were inseparable, you know, mm -hmm. we were together every day. You had Thanksgiving together. Why do everybody keep saying that? <laughs> they brought it up like, they brought it up like three times. We had Thanksgiving together, didn't you? Yeah. Actually, that's one of the Twitter questions we got, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, had, I, I don't know why people find that so funny. I find it funny a little bit too, but. Uh, man, they brought well, that I mean, they keep saying Thanksgiving, but yeah, we were together for Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, Super Bowl, yeah. birthdays, yeah. 4th of July. Yeah. But they kept saying Thanksgiving, which was, I was like, what? Ah. Yeah. But, <laughs> Sorry. Okay, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I advocated for Paul to take that thing. Yeah. And they were like, I, Machuca was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I was, and I said this. I said, hey, to make the transition even more easy, you give Piles wrestling. I'll leave wrestling alone other than the work that I do, content I provide. And that way that gives Piles a vertical that he really, really knows like the back of his hand. And then a couple others. And then I'll make the transition easier. And... uh when the time comes, you give me wrestling back. When Christian's up to speed, you give me wrestling back. And uh, that was the agreement. No, that never happened. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened was Christian and Ray became BFFs. It's a joke in the office to today. Like, <laughs> they're bromance, right? right? And so then it became, now we're getting into, I mean, I'm, 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 unraveling here stuff that your original question was was i the only one to get reprimanded yeah yeah well the answer to that is yes but the answer to that is also i got reprimanded because a point in time came where all of a sudden christian pyle's opinion to ray machuca was way more important than mine i don't know how that happened other than the fact that they became an office romance, right? But, you know, Christian. Because Machuca, Christian, see, like from my take on it is, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, Machuca seemed to care more about the, and I don't know him at all, so take that for whatever. Yeah. His, my perspective was he cared probably more about the corporate side of like, making people upset and relationships no and piles or not piles and you cared more about like your honest 
um, take. Well, that is, that is true, but that is true, but not saying that's right or wrong, but that's how I took it was like, he cared more about keeping a good relationship. Than that is true. All the higher ups, all the higher ups cared more about how it would, I mean, this is any company, right? Right. Right. The big dogs care about how it affects the bottom line. Right. But that's not how you're wired. That's not how I'm wired. Yeah. But it wasn't so much about that when it came to Machuca and Piles. What it was about was... I mean, what it was about was Ray didn't know shit. Yeah. Ray didn't know shit about what I was doing. Ray didn't know shit about what Christian was doing. But when I went to Ray and complained about stuff, it was, ah, oh, Willie, Willie, Willie's being, Willie's being emotional. When Christian went, Willie's being a problem, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and I'll, you know, here's a case in point. I mean, for God's sakes, Christian on a live radio show attacked Nomad. Yeah. Live. Yeah. That was something that was kind of a bomb show, I think, in the trial. Live. Yeah. Were you there for that or? I was five feet away. Yeah. I didn't know whether to punch him or leave or quit or what. Yeah. That never got released, though, right? I mean, there's no man. He's sort of brand new. He's five feet nothing, weighs nothing. Yeah. Piles is attacking him live on the air. Yeah. Me and Brack here looking at each other like, good Lord, what are we supposed to do? Was it over a content thing or? No, this is live on the air. We're talking. Christian had a point. Nomad had a point. I don't know. Nomad wouldn't stop rebutting yeah. and christian said shut up yeah stop talking stop talking just stop talking yeah. then got up off the thing and went over at him i was like yo <laughs> this is embarrassing why wouldn't they release that i mean if you talk about content like why wouldn't they release what that that footage because like, why i'll you, tell you why, why wouldn't you release that if i'll tell you why at stalemates if that happened if you and i ever do a show and you get up and physically fight me even if I got beat to a pulp, I'm releasing that because I'm I'm like, well, I got beat to a pulp, but it's got it's gonna get crazy numbers. But that's I, I'm sick like that in the head. Like I'm gonna, uh, well, that's, I'm wired different. I'll tell you why. Because they also have a lot more dollars. It wasn't them. like, it wasn't three seconds after. So then Christian came back to his seat and we resumed the show and very awkwardly for ten minutes, yeah. and I shut my computer, walked out. Yeah. Very disgruntled. And that dude stayed in the studio and deleted all traces of that. Oh. From So that's the, why we from the ETH, you know. They wouldn't I don't think they would have released it anyways. You think they would have? If they had it? Maybe. Well, no. Yeah, why saying. would they incriminate just, themselves? Yeah. yeah. Um but well, you know, respect, stuff like that, right? And and here Respect the Nomad though for sticking around. You said that was at the beginning. Most people I feel like at the beginning would be like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no. But so you know, Chris is gonna and, and again, Christian's gonna complain that Chris is gonna complain that I said something about well, he 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 mis totally misrepresented the story, I don't think. Yeah. Right? He said that I called him clown Conscious, shoes. I yeah. didn't say it. That's not what the word said. It said clown show. He said clown show. Because What did it, you mean by that? So the question in the question at hand was somebody tweeted me, Willie, what's Nick Suriano gonna do? Is he gonna MMA. wrestle only freestyle? Is he gonna wrestle is he gonna go MMA? Is he gonna wrestle folk? I responded, I'm not paying attention to that either clown show or circus show. I'm just going to, I'm not going to speculate on it, right? And the reason, I mean, the reason for that is <laughs> they change the story every two seconds, right? And I love Bob Soriano, mm -hmm. right? The Bob Soriano is a friend of mine. But Bob Soriano, and, and, and here's the thing, Christian Piles thought that, so Bob would talk to Christian. Bob would talk to me, Bob would talk to Christian. And... But Christian thought that like they were like BFFs or something, right? So Bob, I talked to Bob one time. Bob, don't get mad at me. 
But Bob said, I tell Christian Piles things because I know he's going to go tell people. That he will or won't. That he will. Yeah. He, know, he tells Christian Piles things because he knows Christian's going to go spread it around. Yeah. So Bob's saying he's telling Piles disinformation to keep people guessing, right? Yeah. So that's my point of the tweet. I ain't paying attention to the noise. I believe anything that happens with Nick when it happens. Right. Right? So this is while I'm at JFK Airport. And Christian calls. You can't say that about that's a you know, that's that's a big star and you can't offend people that way. I said, I ain't offend nobody. I said, I'll talk to Bob Soriano right now. Mm-hmm. It'll be all good. Right? So there's another black mark against me that he goes and runs and tells Ray about. Three days later, this dude goes off on UWW on Twitter. Now, does that get any black marks against him? Right. Right? No. So it's just office, is stupid office politics, which led to Ray taking Powell's word over mine. And that was the reality of it. So then another thing I want to touch on before we move on to like, obviously life after flow, but uh, the Ohio State, what's going on in Columbus thing, it became like a whole, like that was super, for me, that was like really awesome to finally see that because I like would listen to FRL all the time. And there was actually part of the reason why I wanted to do this is because um, I don't have relationships with anybody like these schools, really, Mm -hmm. I don't. And so... I was always would hear you guys talk. I'm like, man, I just know that there's stuff that they don't want to say because wrestling is such a small community, but they can't say it or they won't say it because they know. And so I hated that because you don't really have that as much in, in like football and, and everything else. But wrestling's so much smaller that you almost need these schools to like um, to like you or whatever. And well, Jay Jaggers kind of took well, the he- flow does. I don't. Now you don't, right? But Jay Jaggers kind of took the heat for I all never that. Did. Jay Jaggers took the heat for all that, but that couldn't have, he couldn't have been the only guy that Jay Jaggers took the heat for what? For um, kind of calling you out about what's going on in Columbus. Yeah, I mean that's that's. I'm I'm sorry what happened with Jay. But he's not the only that's one. That's collateral. That's collateral right? damage that I wish Jay never had to be involved with. Yeah. I mean that's a private story. Um that had to come out in a trial because Flo sues people. That's what they do. Right. But he, but surely there was other coaches. Like it's not just him, right? Not, no. Yeah. It's pervasive. That's what's wrong with That's, I mean, that's a big part of what's wrong with wrestling media. You want to be critical of us? Don't come here. That's not, that's not Jay Jaggers being something outside the framework of wrestling coaches. That's every wrestling coach. Yeah. That's every wrestling coach. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's what they should do. Yeah. That's what they should do. Jay Jagger should say, Jay Jagger and all the coaches should try to suppress negative stuff as much as they can. And they should try to promote positive stuff as much as they can to cast their program in the best light they can. Mm-hmm. The media should have a backbone to say I'm calling it like I see it. Yeah. Are you uh do you think it's going to change now with like with Rockfin now that it's kind of more it's almost like free for all now. Like if you want a voice you sign up for Rock you get approved and then you get signed up for through Rockfin. I'm I'm not Yeah, I mean I'm not looking to I ain't looking to trash nobody or no thing. Right. And I don't think I I don't think that I trashed Ohio State by any stretch of the imagination. No. Here's the here's the fact of the matter. And, and the original tweet said, okay, I'll say it. What's going on in Columbus? Was that not what was on everybody's mind? They looked bad in wrestle-offs. They looked bad at the Michigan State Open. I think it was Michigan State Open that night. The results weren't good. And because Piles in the trial miss remembered and said they hadn't wrestled they hadn't wrestled yes they had Mm -hmm. yes they had 
And so I think that everybody should should call it like they see it. Yeah. Right? I think that's why you've got to be who you are though, right? Is like you you're not afraid to do that. And so you're right. So I'm not I'm not looking to bash anybody. I'm right. looking to say, listen, Iowa could be the number one team in the country. And wrestlers are up and wrestlers are down. Right? I mean, Iowa could wrestle Iowa could wrestle Edinburgh and go eight and two and dominate the score. Mm-hmm. But their fifth ranked guy got beat by an unranked guy. Mm-hmm. And you should be able to say, what's wrong with him tonight? Mm-hmm. Without facing criticism from coaches. Well, at the same time, you can say that, but you're going to have to deal with it, right? You're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. Well, I'm willing to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Should it, wouldn't, wouldn't Flo want you to do that, though? Because they know that like that's going to... like you got to have a good pulse on Twitter and the, and the internet, right? And know what's going to like make people kind of chime in. Yeah, I don't I mean, I don't know if Flo wants to be, I don't know what they want to be. Yeah, we don't they want to, subscriptions. Yeah. I guess. So, so you, you left Flo um, and before they sued you, were you ever thinking like, maybe I go back to the open mat, maybe I go to uh, inner mat, maybe I go somewhere else? Or is it like, no, I left, um, I'm hearing about this rock fin thing, I'm going there, I'm doing that. Well, I didn't exactly know. I didn't exactly know what I was doing. Yeah. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I said, what's going on in Columbus? Pyle's texting me, I can't believe you're tweeting this. You don't need to say this. And I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Can't do this no more. He's like, what are you saying? I said, I quit. I ain't doing it. I'm out. So. Cut the periscope. Cut the, cut the Gmail, all that. Right, so, so. There, well, there was this weird miscommunication thing in the trial where it's like, you said, I'm done. He says, okay, he's done. And then you wake up the next day and you're like, wait, I'm done? And you're like, well, I thought you said you were done. Well, yeah, no, so, so I what, woke what up happened, the next day. What happened with that? So this is what happened. I woke up the next day, my eyes open. I'm like. You check your Gmail. I'm like, I quit last night. I'm like, Phew. all right. Finally done. I'm 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 glad. It's a relief. Yeah. You know. It was a long time coming. There was a lot of baggage and animosity and and, and frustration. Finally did it. Finally pulled the trigger. Go on my email. <laughs> Locked out. Yeah. I'm like, oh damn, I'm done now. Yeah. I'm done now. I'm unemployed right now. Yeah. I thought there would be a two week thing? I thought there would be a 30 day. Yeah. They're so you like, knew you were done, you just thought it would be like a like a, a better transition? I, I didn't know it was immediate, yeah. you know? But you did know that you'd quit. I was glad I quit. Yeah. I just didn't know it was immediate and I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. Yeah. Now, in the trial, they wanna keep saying, this was a preordained, this was a pre-orchestrated thing between Willie and Martin. Nope. I woke up that day, I was like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but might as well try rock band. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the truth. So, so then you go, you go to rock band, you end up getting sued. Obviously, we, I don't want to get a ton into it. We talked about the trial quite a bit, but I don't want to d- dive even further because we documented it here. You can go back and watch those stuff if you really want to get into every little thing. Um, but you know, you get sued and then ultimately, you know, you had a non-compete where you couldn't work for a year. In that time, was it tough for you to like do anything? Yeah, it was tough. I mean, you're relegated to print, right? So, I mean, you can't, I can't even take a camera and go, Mm -hmm. hey coach, how do you think this went? I can't go, hey, uh, I don't know, Jojo Aragona, tell me about your performance. Um, which, in conjunction with, I now make no money, mm-hmm. <clears throat> made me go like, well, I can't do any video, 
uh, I have no income. Why? So I, there was no point in me being at an event. I mean, if I want to write about something, I can watch every match and write an article about it. I can do the rankings, you know, from home. I mean, not the best. It's better to do rankings if you watch it in person. Were you still getting, like, leads at this time and, like... Leads? Like, like hey, this kid's going to go here or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was talking to everybody in the community still. Mm -hmm. you know? But you just couldn't... Um... You just couldn't do anything digitally, really. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do any video. I couldn't. You know, it's tough when you can't express your opinion on this duel me that just happened. Right. I mean, you don't write editorials. Recaps aren't editorials, you know. Um, and, and video is not print. I mean, the nuance don't come across. The, mm -hmm. So then, you know, you, you know, you get sued, you ultimately, what happened was, I wouldn't really say you won or lost. I guess you won in the sense that you didn't get, you didn't have a non-compete longer than There is expected. no, there is no scenario really in which I could win. Right. It was I just kind of like, no... could it get worse kind of thing. Right. And essentially Livingston said, no, you, I mean, you've, you've dealt with it long enough. Um, we're dissolving it. You're still yeah. on the hook, right? Even right now, as we speak, for this damages thing that we'll find out soon what happens. Um, but during the trial, was there any sense that, like, you 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 know, you thought you were gonna win, or did you ever like think, like, oh man, Livingston, she's already made up her mind? I, there, you know, just judging off some body language. I think that Judge Livingston gets it. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's coming. I don't know. You know, really, there's the injunction being dissolved is a big thing for me because that means I can work. Um, that means I can go about my business and rebuild. You know, it says another thing, when your face isn't out there, when you're not at as many events through the injunction, I mean, your brand takes a hit, yeah. you know? Your brand takes a hit. And people win and lose quick these days, right? It's not, if you ain't on social media, if you ain't on social media winning, you're becoming irrelevant by the day. I think the, the craziest thing, like you left Flow, you leave FRL, and then they bring in Ben Askren. How, how was that for you? Was that a shock or were you like, oh, well, obviously he was a guy that was gonna do it. Um, Cause I took it as like, well, ben, oh, he left, all ben, right, well, watch this. Here's, here's Ben Askren. I knew, there was a, a couple things. Ben couldn't replace me for a couple reasons. One being one being, as much as me and Christian fought, we had great chemistry. Mm -hmm. I don't know that anybody can replicate that. Number two, I knew exactly what was going to happen with Ben, and that was Christian was going to tell him. After one episode, Christian was going to tell him what he could and could not say. Yeah. At, you know, after one episode, at the end of the episode, Christian would say, hey, man, you really shouldn't say this kind of stuff. And... A week later, he would say, man, why'd you say that? That makes us, you know, that's going to make program X. I'm not going to like that, right? And so I don't know for sure because I've only watched a couple snippets of FRL in the last year. Um, when, when somebody has told me, hey, you need to check this out. Or there was a couple times where something controversial came up and I just sort of kind of wanted to see how they handled it. And I'll tune in and stuff. But... I can see that already. I mean, actually, it took a little longer than I thought it would for Ben to be muted, for Ben to be censored. I, but you can see it. You think so? I mean, they're, 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 I've seen Ben on FRL say, start to say something and, and then say verbatim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to say that. You wouldn't want me to say that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's out of his... It's out of his own mouth. Um, but, you know, Ben's a good dude. But 
what hurt me more than anything. I didn't care that somebody's gonna so somebody's gonna replace somebody's gonna replace me. Fine. I don't care. I don't care who it is. Um But what stung was that Ben did that to Martin. Because Ben and Martin were like this. Because he was already on Rockfin? No. Because Ben and Martin have been like this for a decade. Right. And Martin had already left. Well, the company did him dirty as hell. Yeah. The company did him dirty as hell, filed a lawsuit, a frivolous ass lawsuit. Ben knew it was frivolous. Ben knew it was going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he still took that contract. Mm -hmm. Right? That, that, that didn't sit well with me. Not, and not even because of me, because of Ben's relationship with Martin. Um, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's get into some of these Twitter questions. We tweeted, if you guys have questions for the brain, um, we're going to show it to you. We got some videos too. I think you're going to like it. I'm just going to show them, show you these off my phone. How about here. wrestling Twitter is the what, bomb. What do you think Wrestling Twitter it, right? are the greatest people. Yeah. I mean, I think for a while there it was never like cool to hit on flow. And then all of a sudden it seems like, I don't know if it was the trial that really brought it out or what, but I feel like. Isn't it amazing? Wow. I, like. You did a lot to make it happen, but I want to ask you this: what, what? When did you start saying like, "What the heck is this stalemate saying?" Like, did somebody point it out to you, or like, did it just pop up on your timeline, or like, do you remember the first thing? It might have been a meme, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Because you think... did follow me pretty early on. I was like, "This is crazy." I think I think I started following you when that it was the piles video against Minio early on. I think I think that was it. But um, there was another, there was something after that that really sort of resonated with me. When did the lawyer, because I know the lawyers paid attention to it. When did they like... The lawyers. When did they get pointed the out lawyers, to them? The lawyers, the lawyers liked it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if I should say liked it. They, they were invested. found it interesting. Yeah. I, I took it as like, if you think about it, um, most of most of the time when media goes to trials, it's like murder, robbery, like something like a little bit more exciting than like corporate like non competes. Yeah. Um, so well, I mean, and that's the thing too that I don't know if that gets talked about is that non competes never go to trial. Right. Non competes. Oh, we got lucky. Non competes never go to trial. We got lucky. I didn't get fucking lucky. <laughs> no, stalemates got lucky. You got lucky. Yeah. We got lucky because. I didn't get lucky. Non competes never go to trial. You know why this went to trial? The injunction? No. It went to trial because Flo didn't want to. Flo wanted to just try to bleed me. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only reason. Well, we got lucky in the sense of COVID because normally this wouldn't be yes. streamed on YouTube. So the stars aligned for us. So I don't even remember how we even like. It was funny because. It was funny because. And it was it was in the deposition. It was in like text messages. I said they're going to sue us. Not because I, I did anything wrong. Mm -hmm. I knew they were going to sue us because that's what they do. They sue people. They sue right. a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, they're suing. <laughs> I mean, it's public record. They're suing VAC duels. It's a junior high tournament, guys. Yeah. They're suing VAC duels. So, we'll cover that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but what was my point? My were, point was that... In the deposition? In the deposition, they said, yeah, we're going to sue you. And, you know, then the piece of paper comes through. The document comes through. We're suing you. And I went, oh, hell. They're going to make me wrestle in goddamn Robin Hood. Yeah. It's I mean, good. this is good, nothing. Yeah. This is going to do nothing well, but make me a, some sort of martyr. I mean, they're, they're going to look bad. Right. And I'm going to look good. Whether I'm good, whether they're bad, whatever, that's how it's going to appear. Here's, here's, what, here's my thing on it. It's like when I try to explain this to people that are not in this uh, niche world, right now um is one the trial thing right so the trial happens two it's being streamed on youtube which is doesn't happen but because of covid it's yeah. happening yeah three this youtube channel us that no one's really heard of 
comes along out of nowhere kind of in a sense and covers it so not only like like there's a lot of people who would we're not going to watch nine hours of court footage a day right yeah. um and so the fact that we well, came god along, bless you because yeah you watched it a lot of that stuff, man, I had to suffer through. Yeah, well, it, it was, there, so did I. <laughs> there was times where it was like, nothing was being talked about for hours. Like, I don't think people realize how much, and how repetitive, like a lot of the stuff is like, okay, like he's gonna talk about it, and then he's gonna talk about it, and the, like, we already know, you know, in a sense of what's yeah. going on. But um, anyways, let's get into the Twitter questions here. Um, wrestling Twitter. Oh, well, I got, well, hold on though. Well, it's funny, don't you think it's funny? And just like, almost, an enigma is that the community like followed it yeah like why it's i mean they're, I mean, they're that's, passionate it's they're flattering passionate. yeah it's flattering but on the day that flow had i mean literal literally live same time jordan burrow is a heat press conference yeah willie charles there's 400 people. There was almost three times. Yeah. There was almost three times more people watching the trial. Yeah. And while I can understand in a COVID world where there's not a lot of wrestling going on, I can understand people being interested. I can't understand it to that degree. That's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. All right. Let's get into uh, it here. All right. Here we go. This is from um, this is from the Mr. Amazing. Um, shout out to. The Mr. Amazing Chris, what's going on? Chris uh, Christian? Yep, that is him. We're going to play this from the beginning. All right, Willie. What up, man? Um, during the process of the trial, how hard was it for you not to have a gigantic cha, drink a Budweiser, or play on your cell phone and check Twitter when uh, you weren't speaking? Um, I know the rest of us all got to do all that stuff, so uh, I just couldn't imagine sitting there all day, and I felt like, how hard was it for you? <sighs> Who said I didn't? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Saw my screen was black once in a while, huh? Yeah, we saw that. Yeah, that's good. That's a good question here. Uh, let's go to some of the written ones, too. Um, this is from John Renan. Um, he says, any regrets on recruiting piles to flow? <sighs> yeah, probably worst decision possible. But, I mean... <laughs> On one hand, worst decision possible, you know, he ended up, he ended up being a backstabber is what he ended up being, self-preservationist. Um, well, on the other hand, good, because it sort of exacerbated, it sped up the process of me being out of a company whose values I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. This next one is from Almost There. Um, he said, did Flo create the unauthorized we are before or after they found out about the pending NLWC Rockfin event? The unauthorized we are, what is that? A doc? That's the, doc, the, the pen documentary. That might've been, um, that might've been after you. No, that was before. Well, Were you there during that? Oh, did it come out? Did Flo create the unauthorized we are before oh. or after they found out about the NLWC event? It would have been before, right? Well, that would have been before, yeah. Yeah. Um, did the trial, and if so, at what... Oh, this is from Rhino 184. You probably know him by now. Um, he said, did the trial... He's another one that docks me, by the way. In the beginning? Rhino? Yeah. Docks me, yes. Okay. You he, know what he did? No, go ahead. <laughs> this dude... I don't know why he hated me so much, but... This dude posted an ad <laughs> on like, I don't know, Kentucky or something, or like, like I don't know, Oklahoma. <laughs> uh, what's that thing called? List, what's the list? Craigslist? Craigslist. Yeah. He posted an ad on Craigslist that said, I want a giant, um, I want a giant, supply of skull <laughs> That's but pretty good though. I, and i had like thousands and thousands of cans of skull <laughs> but i had just quit and i would like to donate it to people that need it would like it 
<laughs> and put my phone number on there. Oh, and did you hit up? I got 5,000 text messages of sob stories. My husband just lost his job. I would like 10 cans. <laughs> That's good. Uh, it was terrible. All right. Rhino said, did the trial, and if so, at what point, feel less about you, Willie, and more about Flo going after Martin and Rockfin? Um, it never felt otherwise. It felt that way from Jump Street. I mean, as soon as they filed the paperwork, as soon as I got the paperwork that they were suing me, I knew it was about Mark. It wasn't about me. They wouldn't. I mean, they spent like five hundred thousand dollars on this lawsuit minimum. Mm -hmm. They ain't spending five hundred thousand dollars to go after me. They're going after Martin. And Paul's told me multiple times this isn't about you. It's about Martin. All right, the next one from my boy Jagger712. He says, can I at least get Willie to wrestle me the smoke versus the dip? I'll, I'll wrestle Jagger. What do you think of Jagger? I love that dude. He's funny. He's a funny That's dude. my dude. He's a funny I will dude. wrestle. I will wrestle him, so. <laughs> okay. On your channel. <laughs> Live. Live on Matt Scouts. <laughs> All right. Um, have you ever... What if we have to wrestle like he has to be smoking a cigarette and I have to chew him? <laughs> I'm down. I'm, I'll watch it. Uh, Taco de la Mancha says, Hey Willie, long time subscriber, first time caller. Have you ever been offered a scouting position with a university? Yeah, that's why in the trials, in the trial, you know, two weeks before I quit for good, good, I quit and took a position in North Carolina yeah. as a scout. And, uh, you know, I, I really, really feel bad about it. That hurts. That hits deep. That it really hits deep that I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I went through the process. Coleman Scott did a lot to get that position funded. I said yes, and I reneged on that. That's embarrassing to me. You yeah. know, I wish I wouldn't have done that. That's 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 um you know, that's, that's, that's something I'll always regret. I'll always be thankful to Coleman and Tony, uh, Tony Ramos, but, uh, was that ever public before the trial? Public. Like, did you never announce that or anything, right? No, I never announced it. Um, was it on the forums at least at all? Cause that's the first I time I ever heard about it. I told the guys, I told the, we were at, I was with Flo at Super 32. And I told them, I mm -hmm. said, hey, guys, the last night, I said, hey, guys, I got something to share with you. I'm going to North Carolina, taking a job. And so rumors might have got out, but I don't think it was public anyway. Um, all right, this one is from Matt Geeks. <laughs> well, hey, good to see you out of jail, man. I was wondering, are we going to get to see any kind of podcast or live show or anything like that coming out of Matt Scouts in the future? I know that we've uh, we've waited way too long to see you back on the mic, man. I've waited way too long too. I mean, it's. I mean, yeah. The short answer is yeah. There's going to be way too. There's going to probably be way too many shows. I had a conversation um, with a couple guys today about how many shows is too many because I would like to do one on high school rankings. I want to do one on. Um, everything that's going on college, high school, international, uh, what just happened, what will, what, you know, what we're looking forward to this weekend. Um, I want to do one specifically on high school rankings. I want to do one on off topic stuff. Um, like the old, uh, open mat days, non wrestling topics, religion, <laughs> politics, um, especially no, and, and no kidding. Like, um, what all went on this year with, with COVID and racial tensions, um, I want to dive into that. You know, I would like to have wrestling, wrestling people on. So let's let's bring on, you know, I don't know. Let's bring on Nate Jackson talking about race relations mm. and talk about that. It's it, not wrestling, but with wrestling people, you know. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's. Uh, I don't want to miss any here. A lot of people wanted um, this one from Cody Arnold to be talked about here at Cody Ocho 5. Minnesota can, boy. Yes, sir. Can you describe how you find balance in the inner turmoil of the pride you felt and what you helped build flow into versus 
the betrayal you felt during this process? Well, there's, I mean, I think there was two. Uh, yes, it was a great question because it, it's a double-edged sword. I, I was very proud of what we made to open mat. And then when I went to flow, I was very proud of, I mean, I, I'll say it between live streaming and my innovations like live streaming is obviously i mean you could be a moron and you could be an idiot as long as you have a live stream of a major event you're gonna be all right right so i ain't taking full credit for flow's rise but in the editorial space in the content space I made flow what it is, what it is today. So yes, I'm very proud. I'm very proud of that, right? All the products, all the products they offer were either my suggestions or my innovations, right? Mm. I don't call me a dick for saying that, but I believe that. Um, but there was two, there was two prongs of uh, remorse and it's one that they sued me, right? Because they didn't have to sue me. I mean, what 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 kind of, what kind of decent human being or de decent uh, entity sues a little guy and ruins his? You know, I mean, they try to put me out of work. If it was up to them, the 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 thing would still be going on. They probably they, they they tried to ruin me to get to another guy who outmaneuvers them at every <laughs> five minutes, right? So. You're willing to, you're willing to have me collateral damage, to go after another guy. That's bullshit, and that's 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 lack of character. And the second thing, the second point of remorse is that, um, yeah, I'm proud of what we did at Flow, what I did at Flow in my time there. But I'm also remorseful for what they've become, and that's just. A subscription machine, you know? Mm. All right, this last one here is from Don Bashata. That's uh, my man. Yep. Question four. Uh, when are you going to change the moniker back to Greatest Mind in Wrestling as, to, as opposed to Goat Peacock, which I think is hilarious, by the way. Um, five. When are you coming back? Uh, when's the podcast going to be back on online? Uh, looking forward to seeing it. Uh, and six, who's wrestling on the 1222 card at Nitty Lion Wrestling Club? I know you have the in, so let us all know uh, who's doing what. Uh, I'm glad to see that uh, you and Zach are working together. I think uh, what he did during your trial was awesome and uh, something that was kind of needed for the sport, put, a, I think, a good spin on a kind of a weird situation. But uh, I'm glad you guys are working together again, and uh, hopefully you'll continue to work together in the future. And congrats on everything. Talk soon. Yeah, so that was a there was six part question, but for time, six I, part just, I just did the last from Don. Thing. Don's a lawyer. That's a classic lawyer move. Six part question, <laughs> but um, greatest mind in wrestling will be the moniker again, uh, very soon. I don't know. I need maybe to crowdsource. So I'm gonna make it greatest mind in wrestling the Twitter handle. But I need what should my what should my show be called? I don't know. Greatest mind in wrestling seems too long for a show. Um, Second part was what? Second part was... Oh, he wanted to know about yeah. the December 22nd thing. December 22nd card. <laughs> I mean, am I going to... Yeah, I mean, December 22nd is going to be Nittany Lion Wrestling Club against uh, NC State. <laughs> with a surprise banger. Uh, yeah, I, don't, I, think that's all, I think that's all out there. Oh, when's the show's coming back? So... Um, shows will be back next week after your media run. Shows will be back probably next week. Soon can't get here soon enough. I mean, I miss it. All right, I think we've had you here long enough. Our camera, our cameras are dying and everything. Uh, we're just, <laughs> I talk too much. Hopefully, this footage is good. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please drop a comment down below. Subscribe. Follow hey, us. thanks for what you do too. I mean, that's the reason. Um, I think you're adding. I think you're adding a piece to the puzzle of uh, wrestling media that that's lacking. I, appreciate it. I think it's unique. Um, and I think you're a very fair, you know, the, the first couple things you did on the Willie trials, I was like, 
I was like, that is fair, Zach, but you don't know. But you don't know, but you don't know. And yeah. then as the trial went on, I think you started knowing. And, um, but to be fair, it's all you can ask. Yeah. And uh, you did a great job with that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, yeah, that's kind of the nail on the head there. It's like, it's hard to like throughout the trial to not eventually start feeling your own opinion. Yeah. Um, but it is what it is. Um, at Matt Scott Willie on Twitter. Um, subscribe on Rockfin, Mascouts. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.